What is cancel culture and how did it start? Cancel culture is when someone is boycotted, shamed, or blacklisted for their words or actions. It's a form of social media-driven mob justice that has real-life consequences. The term cancel culture was first used in 2015, but the concept has been around much longer. Cancel culture is nothing new. In the 18th and 19th centuries, women who spoke out against injustice were often labeled as hysterical and ostracized by society. In the early 20th century, African Americans who fought for civil rights were met with violence and slander. Now, in the age of social media, cancel culture has taken on a new life. Anyone can be canceled for anything at any time. The negative effects of cancel culture. Cancel culture has become a popular way to shame people for their words or actions. But what happens when we start canceling people for things they haven't even done? We're seeing the negative effects of cancel culture play out in our society. People are being afraid to speak their minds or share their opinions for fear of being canceled. We're seeing relationships and even whole communities destroyed because someone said or did something that someone else didn't like. It's time to put an end to cancel culture. We need to learn to disagree with each other without destroying relationships. We need to have open dialogue and discussion, not silence and shaming. Otherwise, we'll continue to see the negative effects of cancel culture play out in our society. The problem with cancel culture. Cancel culture has become a dangerous phenomenon in today's society. Social media has given rise to a new form of mob justice that is quick to judge and condemn without due process. This cancel culture is destroying lives and careers without any regard for fairness or due process. We need to stop this cancel culture before it destroys even more lives. We need to have a civil society where people are allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. We need to respect each other's opinions and beliefs, even if we don't agree with them. Examples of times when cancel culture has gone too far. Cancel culture is a phenomenon that has taken over social media in recent years. It refers to the practice of withdrawing support for someone or something after they have done or said something offensive. While cancel culture can be a force for good, it can also go too far. One example of cancel culture gone too far is the case of Justine Sacco. Sacco was an executive at IAC, the company that owns Tinder and Ocupid. In 2013, she made a racially insensitive tweet before boarding a flight to Africa. The tweet went viral and Sacco was promptly fired from her job. However, many people felt that Sacco's punishment was too harsh. She lost her job and reputation over one careless wheat. There was no way for her to make amends or apologize for her mistake. She was fired and her life changed forever. People are afraid to speak their mind. In recent years, there has been a growing trend of people being afraid to speak their minds. This is largely due to the rise of cancel culture, where people are quick to judge and criticize others for their words or actions. This trend is particularly concerning because it discourages open dialogue and debate. 
Instead of listening to different perspectives, people are quick to shut down any opinion that they disagree with. This ultimately leads to a more divided and polarized society. It's important that we all take a step back and think about the impact of our words before speaking or writing them. We should also be more tolerant of different opinions, even if we don't agree with them. Only then can we hope to have meaningful conversations that lead to positive change. Why cancel culture is harmful. Cancel culture has been a controversial topic as of late. Some people believe that it is necessary in order to hold people accountable for their actions, while others believe that it is harmful. Here are some reasons why cancel culture is harmful. 1. Cancel culture creates an environment of fear and paranoia. People are afraid to speak their minds or express their opinions for fear of being canceled. This can lead to self-censorship and a loss of creativity. 2. Cancel culture leads to a mob mentality. Once someone is labeled as problematic, it can be difficult for them to shake off that label. And as we've seen with recent events, cancel culture can quickly spiral out of control and result in mob violence. 3. Cancel culture ultimately silences dissenting voices and promotes conformity. It's preventing open dialogue and constructive debate. Cancel culture has become a weapon used by people on both the political left and right to silence those with whom they disagree. It's a form of online mobbing that can have real-life consequences, such as job loss or expulsion from social media platforms. Critics say cancel culture is antithetical to open dialogue and constructive debate, two things that are essential for a healthy society. When people are afraid to speak their minds for fear of being canceled, it stifles creativity and prohibits the exchange of new ideas. What's more, it creates an echo chamber in which people only consume information that reaffirms their existing beliefs. If we want to have a healthy society, we need to encourage open dialogue and constructive debate. Cancel culture does the opposite, and it needs to stop. How to stop cancel culture? It can be used to silence dissent and punish people for having unpopular opinions. Additionally, it can lead to a chilling effect where people are afraid to speak up for fear of being canceled themselves. So how do we stop cancel culture? First, we need to have an open dialogue about the issue. We need to be able to discuss our differences without resorting to name-calling and personal attacks. Second, we should focus on reforming rather than canceling those who have done wrong. Instead of canceling someone, we should rather reform them. We need to teach people what is wrong and help them understand the correct way to behave. When we look at the state of our society, it's easy to see that cancel culture is doing more harm than good. We need to come together and stop this destructive force before it destroys us completely. It's preventing meaningful progress. While cancel culture may seem like a good way to get rid of those who are harmful to society, it often does more harm than good. When we cancel someone, we're usually not changing their views or behaviors, we're just giving them a reason to hate us even more. Additionally, 
Cancel culture often leads to the silencing of voices that could be helpful in bringing about positive change. I hope this has given you a better understanding of cancel culture.